today what we're going to be talking about is factoring and you've factored a little bit in algebra one and in algebra two we're going to review that and kind of take it to the next level so what factoring is it's from it's going from standard form to intercept form of a quadratic here in our warm-up we have three um, quadratics in intercept form that we're going to change into standard form by foiling out. So x times x is x squared minus 10x plus 2x minus 20. And then we can combine our like terms. Um, we have x squared. We have nothing to combine that with. Negative 10x plus 2x is negative 8x and then minus 20. So that is our standard form. Here, we're going to multiply the insides first of two parentheses. So we have x squared plus 1x plus 5x plus 5. And then again, we can combine our like terms. So we have x squared plus 6x plus 5, and then we can distribute that 3 to get negative 3x squared minus 18x minus 15. And then this last one here, distribute the 2x, we get 2x squared minus 8x. So that one is also in standard form with no c value. So factoring is going in the opposite directions where I'm giving you these quadratics and I want you to turn it into intercept form. So some depth, some vocabulary, we have a monomial, which a monomial, a monomial is an expression that is a variable, a constant, or a product of a variable or a constant. So like a variable could just be x. Okay, that is a monomial. It's a single term. A constant is just a number, so 4. That is another monomial. There's one term. Or we could have 5x. That is another monomial having 5 and x being multiplied. A binomial is a sum of two monomials. So an example of that could be x plus 5. That is a binomial. There are two terms there. Another example could be uh, 3x minus 4. That is another example. And a trinomial, you know, tri means 3, the sum of 3 monomials. So these quadratics up here are examples of monomials. We have three terms x squared minus 8x minus 20. That is an example. So like I was saying, uh, factoring is reversing the process of uh, foiling. And we're going to talk about factoring today just when the a value is 1, just when the number in front of x squared is 1. When we do that, we ask ourselves what two values multiply to our c term but add to b. So if we look at this, see what two numbers add up to negative 3 and multiply to negative 18? Well, those numbers would be uh, neg uh, positive 3 times negative 6 is negative 18, and 3 plus negative 6 is negative 3. So the two numbers we're going to use are positive 3 and negative 6. So we would write this as x plus 3 times x minus 6. All right, here, two numbers that multiply to 48 but add up to 14. So that would be 6 and 8. So we write d plus 6 and d plus 8. Now, you could rewrite it in a different order. You could do d plus 8 and d plus 6. And if you wanted to double check, you could multiply this out. You know, d squared plus 6d plus 8d 
plus 48. And then when you can combine your like terms, you get d squared plus 14d plus 48, which matches your original. So that is another option. So your two numbers that add up to positive 2 but multiply to negative 63, uh, that's going to be positive 9 and negative 7. And again, if you want to check this, you can multiply it out. Um, sometimes I'd like to do that just to be sure, especially when we're looking at more complicated ones. But for uh, the most part, you may not need to for these ones when A is equal to 1. When factoring an expression, you always want to look to see whether all the terms have a factor in common. It, and that is called the greatest common factor, abbreviated GCF. You're going to he hear me say that a lot. Uh, say that a lot. Factor out a GCF. Did you check for a GCF? Did you check to see if there's a greatest common factor? So when we look for a uh, greatest common factor, we, we ask ourselves, is there a number we can divide everything by? You may notice that all of those numbers are even, so we can divide those by 2. But we're not doing this. What we're doing is factoring out a 2. So 2, and then we're left with x squared minus 6x plus 8. And now we're going to factor this like we did before. Two numbers that add up to negative 6 but multiply to positive 8. Uh, one of the tricks you can do is say, well, if I have two numbers that have to multiply to be positive, we know either both of those numbers have to be positive or both have to be negative. Because the only way to multiply two numbers to get positive is a positive times a positive or a negative times a negative. We see that they have to add up to negative 6. Well, that tells us our two numbers must both be negative because they have to add to a negative number but multiply to a positive number. So our numbers are going to be x uh, minus 2 and x minus 4. Now, we don't want to forget about the 2 in front. So then again, this is our factored form. Letter B. You say, well, I can divide or factor out a 4, but something else to note is that if the first term is negative, if your a value is negative, you always want to factor that out too. So we're going to factor out a negative 4. And when we do that, what happens is all of our signs change. So 12x, 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. Negative 28 divided by negative 4 is positive uh, 7. And if you ever want to check to see if you factored out a GCF correctly, you can always distribute it back in and say, okay, negative 4 times x squared is negative 4x squared. Negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12x, and so on. So then we factor this. Two numbers that multiply to positive 7 but add to negative 3. And you ask yourselves, well, the only two numbers that multiply to 7 are 1 and 7, and there's no way I can add positive 1 and negative 7 and, and get negative 3. So this is actually our completely factored form. There are going to be times where the only thing you can do is factor out a GCF. Right, letter C. We can factor out a 5, but they also have an x in common. You know, this is x squared. And this is x to the first power. So then we're left on the inside with just x minus 2. Because again, if you were to distribute this back in, 5x times x squared times x gives you 5x squared. 5x times negative 2 gives you negative 10x. So again, that's as far as we can go with this problem. There's nothing more that we can do. Now, on the next page, we're going to talk about some special factoring patterns that make life a little bit easier. The first one is called a difference of two squares, meaning if I can take the square root of 
the two terms I have and there is a negative sign between them, I can factor that into a plus b times a minus b. So the values are the same, but one is a positive and then the other has a negative. So for example, x squared minus 4. Well, the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 4 is 2. So this is a difference of two squares, special pattern. So I'm going to rewrite this as x minus 2 and x plus, times x plus 2. And that pattern will always work. And another way of thinking about this is saying is this x squared plus 0x minus 4. Well, what two numbers multiply to negative 4 but add to 0? Well, that would be negative 2 and positive 2. So this so the difference of two squares just gives you a little bit of a shortcut uh, getting to the answer. I want you to have this ingrained in your brain that there are no sum of two squares. So if this said x squared plus 4, you cannot factor that. That is one of the most common mistakes that uh, we will see this year. Then we have our perfect square trinomials. And again, you can always go back to what two numbers multiply to C but add to B. This just makes it a little bit easier when we get more complicated uh, numbers. And the way I look at this is if, if I have a perfect square and another perfect square, I check and see, okay, if I square root both of these and then multiply them together and multiply that by 2, do I get the middle term? And if you do, it is a perfect square trinomial. So this would factor to um, a plus b quantity squared like that. So for example, you look at this and you may say, well, two numbers that multiply to 9 but add to 6 are positive 3 and positive 3. And you would say x plus 3 times x plus 3. But then we would have to write that as x plus 3 squared. Using the shortcut, though, you say, okay, what's the square root of x? The square root of, sorry, what's the square root of x squared? Well, that is x. What's the square root of 9? That's 3. And if I do 3 times x times 2, because that's what the rule says, that gives me 6. So 3x times 2 is 6x. So then you can use a special shortcut and say, well, this is going to be x plus 3 squared. So this can be also used when we have a negative there instead. So we have a minus b squared. So for this one, you know, x squared minus 4x plus 4, uh, if you look at this and say, okay, what two numbers multiply to positive 4 but add to negative 2? Again, you may say x minus 2 times x minus 2, which is x minus 2 squared. Or with the shortcut, the square root of x squared is x. And since we have a minus, so minus and the square root of 4 is 2 squared. So that's just another way of doing it. But, you know, the method that we talked about before will be useful as well. So let's look at some of these problems down here. We have m squared minus 121 that we need to factor. Well, 121 is a perfect square. It is um, 11 times 11 or 11 squared. So we can write this as m minus 11 times m plus 11. Now, this one, again, you may not recognize that this is a special pattern because uh, if we take the square root of 81, that's 9. The square root of w squared is w, and if I multiply 2 times w times 9, that gives me 18. So you could write this as um, w minus 9 squared, or again, 
two numbers that multiply to positive 81 but add up to negative 18, that's negative 9 and negative 9, which equals uh, w minus 9 squared. Letter C. This is not factorable because of this plus sign. Not factorable. If it was x squared minus 144, then it would be factorable, but because it's uh, x squared plus 144, it is not. Now these last two here, uh, factor completely using any of the strategies. I notice that all of these can be divi uh, divided by 2. So we factor out a 2. And then we say what two numbers multiply to negative 4 but add to 3. That's going to be positive 4 and negative 1. And notice that we still have to make sure this 2 is in front. Now with this one, we can factor out a negative 7y because they both have a y in common. And then we are left with y minus 9. And that's as far as we can go. We can't do anything more with that. And that's something that students struggle with with factoring uh, is that they sometimes don't know when they are done and this make up stuff uh, to keep going. But if, if you can't factor anything, then you're, you don't have to. You're, you're done. You know, like this problem. All we could do is factor out that negative 7y. We couldn't do anything more. So factoring is something that's going to come up for uh, the rest of your high school math career. So we are going to spend some time making sure we're good at it and then um, taking it to the, to the next level. So thanks for watching. Make sure to like the video and subscribe.